Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the uh, Monday, May 30th live stream. Happy uh, Veterans, happy Memorial Day. It's kind of hard to be happy on Memorial Day. That never made any sense to me. Um, so to all of those who uh, perished in uh, while serving their country, uh, if you have friends or family in that position, uh, our hearts and prayers go out to you. Um, one thing about veterans, guys. Veterans are being ruined far worse than average by federal student loans. I kid you not. It's true. We have a ton of veterans in our group. And maybe we'll even see some here tonight on the live stream. I don't know. But there's a lot of them. They are targeted by terrible for-profit colleges. And even active duty people often, when they're out on deployment, they their loans go haywire on them and you know, a $25,000 loan becomes a $75,000 monstrosity. That's the way the federal student loan program works. It's kind of like gotcha capitalism. If they can coerce you into default uh, some way, shape or form, they can turn what started as a headache into an absolutely impossible monstrosity. And that's what they do. Um, oh, you know, there's a veteran in our group, Linda Navarro. I don't know her exact numbers, but it's something like this. She borrowed something like $30,000. She has be repaid something like fifty dollars or $60,000 on a $30,000 loan. She currently owes more than $100,000 on her debt. Now, again, I don't have her numbers at the tip of my brain right now, but it's like that. Um, so if you're a veteran, you're very uh, welcome in this group. And by the way, we are studentloanjustice.org. We are the oldest, first, oldest, largest, and in many ways, only true grassroots group fighting actually and only and absolutely for student loan justice. For the first 15 years of our existence, that meant very moderately fighting for the return of bankruptcy rights to student loans. Student loans are the only type of loan in our nation's history to be uniquely stripped of this constitutionally enshrined protection. More recently, however, since 2020, 2019 actually, we've been calling on the president to cancel all federally owned student loans by executive order. We, this group, started the petition in March 2020 that launched this concept into the pub national conversation. Um, thankfully, six months after that, Elizabeth Warren and Chuck Schumer introduced a bill calling on then President Trump to, yeah, cancel federally owned student loans by executive order. And we're thrilled that they did that. We are a very nonpartisan group, by the way. If you're a Republican, Democrat, or any other party, very welcome here. Um, so we're thrilled that Elizabeth Warren and Chuck Schumer embraced the concept of canceling student loans by executive order. We are very not thrilled that they slapped an arbitrary, swampy, tricky, up to $50,000 cap on their proposal. There was never a good reason to do that. This lending system is failed. And I mean, capital F failed. And I will prove that to you here tonight in the ensuing conversation. Um, so maybe the one action item before we begin, we're fighting for a bill, S2598. Bankruptcy still remains at the heart of this whole problem. We are not going to see anything meaningful from Joe Biden. He could call a press conference tomorrow and say, okay, folks, I'm going to cancel up to $50,000. And the band will cheer and the parade will happen and the ticker tape and the champagne will pop. And at the end of the day, that will come to mean almost nothing for almost everyone. You get three grand. You get nothing because you earn too much. You didn't fill out your form right. You get nothing. You didn't file your taxes. You get nothing. Um, you didn't dot your I and cross your T. You get nothing. Hey, you got 13 grand. Congratulations. Um, it'll be like that. That is the way the Department of Education rolls. The Department of Education is not a good entity, ladies and gentlemen. They have abandoned all pretense of serving the public. And that was true even 17 years ago when we first started this group. They are a disgusting, corrupted, captured agency. They want your money. The Department of Education are not good people. They will take whatever loan cancellation gimmick Biden might put to them with all the weasel words uh, um, 
uh, attached to it. And they will make sure that up to 50,000 or up to 100,000 or up to a gajillion comes to almost nothing for almost everyone. That's the way that works. So, however, with the threat of bankruptcy returned, the whole game changes, ladies and gentlemen. Nobody wants to file for bankruptcy, least of all me, least of all you. But we have got to get the threat of bankruptcy back on our side if we are going to see any kind of meaningful student loan cancellation from President Biden. That is just the fact. Now, if Bernie or if Elizabeth Warren or somebody else was a president, maybe it would be different. But it's not. They're not. We have Joe Biden. He's not a good guy. So, ladies and gentlemen, the most important thing I'm going to say to you tonight is we need to get S2598 passed. Whether you would ever or never file for bankruptcy does not matter. Having the threat of bankruptcy is what is important. So if you forget everything I say tonight, remember this. Go to our website, studentloanjustice.org, and do at least a month worth of our daily actions. You need a Twitter account. It's not hard. Um, you can probably do one day of our daily actions in like 30 seconds. It's like retweet this, retweet that. Not hard, but very important and very effective when everybody does it. We've got over a million people in our group, I'm happy to say. We've got 1.14 million signatures on our petition. We've got two or 300,000 uh, people across our other platforms. We have 7 million people who have gone to our Giphy um giphy.com slash student loan justice platform to look at our awesome artwork so but we're not counting those um we've got an army worth of muscle to flex ladies and gentlemen but that is absolutely meaningless unless and until you help us flex that muscle we need you um so if, if you're watching us on live stream if, if you're watching us live on facebook or on Twitter tonight and you are watching me live, then by all means, throw out your questions or comments and I will be very happy to respond to them in stream. Um, looking at our Facebook group now. Um, so the lending system is collapsing, ladies and gentlemen, in slow motion, but it's collapsing. And I will prove that to you with maybe five or six facts. Number one, even before this pandemic, nearly two thirds of all borrowers were not making payments on their loans. 64.3% of all federal student loan borrowers were not making payments on their student loans in, in December of 2019, let's say. Um, that's true. What do you call it when two thirds of the borrowers of a lending system aren't paying? I, th I think that's a failed lending system. And by the way, even if you don't count the kids who are in college, so they're on a in-school deferment, it's still 57%. So over half of everybody was not paying before the pandemic. That's a failed lending system. Um, the default rate for 2004 students, uh, people who left school in 2004, the default rate is 40%. Probably higher, actually. The way they did that study, I think it's probably higher because they, they used a voluntary survey data to find that, arrive at that number. And I think that skews a lot towards the financially stable, not the financially unstable, because financially unstable people are very l less likely to fill out a voluntary survey from the government or from the Federal Reserve or whatever. Um, so... 40% default rate, guys. And by the way, people in 2004 were borrowing less than a third of what's being borrowed today. You know, the subprime home mortgage default rate was 20%. So we're already double that for 2004 students who were borrowing on average somewhere around maybe $13,000, where today the average undergrad we're talking about, uh, today the average undergrad is borrowing close to $40,000. So if the default rate was 40% for 2004 students, what do you think it's going to be for people more recent? Is it going to be 50%? Yeah. Is it going to be 60%? Yeah. Is it going to be 70%? Probably. I think it's probably going to be somewhere around 75%. And that was before the pandemic, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's a failed lending system, guys. Before the pandemic, two-thirds weren't paying. 
Now here today, almost nobody's paying. People have had two years to reflect on their lives and they've come to realize how ridiculous these predatory hyperinflationary loans are. I'll be stunned if even 20% of the, of the borrowers resume paying ever. People are done. We're done. And by the way, most student loan borrowers are older people, not younger, older, older than 35, not younger than 35. In fact, people over the age of 50, they now outnumber. There are more people over the age of 50 than there are people under the age of 25 with student loans. Like you would think that the, the, the big spike would be the under 25 crowd, right? They graduate in, at 22 years old or 23, uh, got, got their master's degree at like 25. So you would think that there would be a big spike there and that those people would easily outnumber the number of senior citizens over 50 with student loans. No, not true. People over 50 outnumber people under 25 with student loans. And by the way, the over 50 people owe on average 300% more than the under 25 crowd. Now, how fucked up is that? Pardon my French, but I've just got to ask. People in their 50s didn't bar borrow much money at all when they went to college. People in their 50s borrowed probably a quarter, not even a quarter of what's being borrowed uh, by the under 25 crowd. So why on earth do they on average owe 300% more? I'll tell you why. Because this lending system is crooked. It's predatory. It's designed to fail. So the lending system, ladies and gentlemen, is going away. That's maybe the good news. The good news is the lending system is done. It's finished. It's toast. And you can see some more supporting data to support that claim at bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash student loans failed. And you can see all that and more. Student loan system is done, guys. It's toast. The loans will not be paid. No matter what anybody, any, any finger waggers might say or think or feel or emote or do or not do, whatever the people in Washington, D.C. might say or think or feel, whatever the media might say, it doesn't matter. Whatever I might say, it doesn't matter. The loans will not be paid. So the loans will be canceled. The only question is whether we get a good, clean death and burial of this lending system in a way that stimulates the economy and allows people to get on with their lives and contribute to society, or whether we have a years or even decades long, disgusting, painful, civilly, probably socially unrestful, unwinding, that is very ugly, um, which way is that going to go? Are we going to get the good death or the bad death? Um, we're fighting for the good death, ladies and gentlemen. We, as I said, we started the petition, change.org slash cancel student loans. Got over a million people on the petition. Um, I'm very thrilled to say that after uh, two years, we have made just absolutely breathtaking progress in the past two years. You know, we were schlepping around Iowa two years ago practically begging Elizabeth Warren and uh, Bernie Sanders and, and Joe Biden to very moderately include bankruptcy protections in their presidential agendas. Well, now here today, we've got a great bill in the Senate, S-2598. It's bipartisan. It has Republicans on the bill. By the way, we are a fiercely nonpartisan group. Whatever your political stripes, you're very welcome here. Um, but I have to be honest, and I have to tell you that in Congress anyways, Republicans tend to oppose us. So the fact that we have actually more Republican co-sponsors on our bill, S-2598, that returns bankruptcy protections to federal student loans. The fact that we have more Republicans on that than we have uh, Democrats is saying something very, very, very strong. And remember, guys, only, only when we get the threat of bankruptcy back are we going to see any kind of meaningful cancellation. When we get bankruptcy rights back, it's a pretty direct path between that and the president or the secretary of education, whatever you want to call it, pretty much having to broadly cancel student loans. And the good news is very few people, maybe even nobody will actually have to file. Um, <clears throat> so here's a couple other 
pieces of data that you need to be aware of to prove that the student loan system is collapsing. Have you noticed how afraid the people in Washington DC have been to, ex to make, to turn the lending system back on? There's a good reason for that because the people in Washington DC know what I know. What I know is what I just told you. This lending system is toast. There's no saving it and there should be no saving it. They know exactly what's going to happen when they turn this loan nonsense back on. Nothing. Nobody's going to pay. That's what's going to happen. Um, yeah, they might take defaults and put them in good stead. That's not a solution. That's like taking dirty laundry and putting it in the dryer. That's nonsense. Like I'm a defaulted borrower, by the way, you may, you may be too. In fact, the odds are you probably are, or you have defaulted at some point. Um, I don't know about you, but I don't want them touching my loans. I don't want any, I don't want those people doing anything. I, I will not ever, and you, in my humble opinion, nobody should ever, particularly defaulted borrowers, should ever sign anything, agree to anything that might legitimize this illegitimate debt. Think about that. You know, if you sign your name to any kind of piece of paper the Department of Education puts in front of you, think about the risks involved. This is illegitimate debt, guys. It's bad debt. It's unconstitutional. It's illegitimate. You know, I vowed many years ago that I would never pay another dime on my student loans until at the minimum we had the same bankruptcy protections on our side that every other borrower for every other type of loan has. Uh, in my humble opinion, it's now at the point where this lending system is so catastrophically failed. It is not only unwise, it's probably unpatriotic to ever pay another dollar into this big government nationally wrecking beast. It shouldn't be fed. It should be taken to the bath and drowned in the tub. And I hope you're feeling me on that. I know people are going to do what they want to do. People are way more afraid than they need to be. People are afraid of wage garnishment. People are afraid of the government. Uh, you know, I'm here to tell you guys, the federal government is way more afraid of us than we should be of it. You know, there are many ways to bulletproof yourself against the collection goons. And in my, as I said, in my humble opinion, it's not only unwise, but it's unpatriotic. Unpatriotic to ever pay another dollar on your loans. My humble opinion. You do what you want. Um, but if you ever do re resume paying on your student loans, you're going to be in the vast minority of people. As I said, I would be stunned if even one in five of all federal student loan borrowers ever resume paying on their loans again. Whenever they try and turn the lending program back on, I don't think that even 20% will pay. So if you want to be in the minority and throw your good money after more good money, then you do whatever you want. But what I said, I stand by a thousand percent. Um, the lending system is failed, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> like, what else do you need to know? Um, it's, you know, the fact that it's become a political football is unfortunate. There's no good reason that Republicans should be opposing us. This lending scam is wrecking the red states far worse than average, far worse than blue states. In fact, the worst hurt states are the entire South. Like the, the top 10 worst states. It's from Florida to North Carolina to Missouri down to Louisiana and everything in between. Those are the 10 worst states right there. Plus Texas. There's $141 billion in student loan debt hanging around the necks of the people in Texas. And by the way, most of those borrowers, in fact, nationwide, most student loan borrowers, they're not these young liberals. That's nonsense. In fact, over half of them are likely either Republican or independent. So there's absolutely no good reason for Republicans to be opposing student loan cancellation. There's no good reason for Republicans to be opposing returning bankruptcy student loans. And the good news, the best news I have for you tonight, guys, is thankfully, we have seen almost all opposition to bankruptcy go away over the past 
two years. In fact, that's the greatest badge of honor I have to even point to now. And it's, it's very quiet, like nobody noticed. But check it out as you're going forward, doing our battles, uh, doing fighting this battle with us, doing our daily actions, as you will see when you go to the website, our daily actions, which you need to be doing. When you're doing those, you will notice that even the Republicans today that we, we might be fighting against on Twitter or whatever, even though even even they now say, well, OK, yeah, I, I will give you that. We student loans should be treated the same as other loans in bankruptcy. They say that now. They didn't say that f even three years ago. So we're in a very good spot, guys. We're in the strongest position we've ever been in. I don't know why the other groups aren't fighting for bankruptcy. Quite frankly, it's suspicious. But I don't care. Um, the other groups can defend themselves. I don't care about them. What I know is the student loan problem as a, from a policy perspective. And what I know is that bankruptcy still lies at the core of this whole entire problem. And as long as bankruptcy remains gone, whatever gimmick Joe Biden trots out will be a trick. It will be a cruel joke. And you, my friend, will be the punchline. Mark my words. It's true. My words are true. They are true. They're true. So, um, hey, I see we have quite a few people here tonight on this lovely Memorial Day. Um, let me see if I can. Words are true. They are true. See some comments here. Hey, Torio. Torio Williams is with us tonight. What do you know? Here's a veteran right here. Toria Williams says, yes, I'm a veteran. When I re-enlisted, my Army contra contract promised to pay $10,000 a year on my loans. They paid nothing. After I persisted, they started sending me on tasks similar to Jim Crow. If you can find the colonel who gave you a, a, an unsat to overturn his decision before you renew the contract, we will pay on your loan. Contacting TTE student loan companies were just as bad. They sent me back to my reserve unit putting it back on them. As a result, no one paid. No one paid. And that leaves me swimming in debt. My sister is also a veteran. Toria's sister, also a veteran, who is in Desert Storm, Desert Shield. And she has to get 100% disabled in order to get considered for loan forgiveness. It's pretty hard to get 100% total and permanent disability determination from the VA. It's very difficult, I happen to know. Thank you, Toria. Thank you for putting a face to this scam. You know, I and I just have to say, you know, a, a, a very dark, unknown part of this country's history is that we have treated our veterans like shit since going back to World War I. I kid you not. The government promised uh, World War I uh, veterans bonuses. And when the depression happened and the economy went south, the veterans start asking for their bonuses. And the federal government um, did this to them. And so we actually wound up, and few people know this, with a literal, I would say, army of veterans camped out on the White House lawn demanding their bonuses. And you know what happened? The U.S. military crushed them. People died. You know, I'm a big George Patton fan, but I have to say, George Patton, uh, un under the orders from Douglas MacArthur, put down this bonus army and knocked these veterans back. So that's pretty shitty. And so, too, here we see with the GI Bill. GI Bill doesn't go nearly as far as you might think. And here's Toria um, describing for you how the bottomless maze of military bureaucracy, of which I am very have a working familiarity with, having worked for Northrop Grumman and the Navy and other people, um, some bad things going on there, guys. So... Anybody out there, particularly veterans out there who are wagging their finger at the people being crushed by these loans, you tell them that this goes way beyond left versus right. We're not liberal snowflakes, not by a freaking long shot. We're veterans. We're seniors. I'm a senior. Turns out. 
to my great surprise. Um, yeah, this is not a liberal snowflake issue. This thing is hitting all walks of life. So thank you, Toria. Thank, thank you very much for your comment. And I hope you will uh, send all your other uh, veteran friends our way because we could really use their help. Um, hey, Vanjie's here. She loves veterans. Thank you, Vanjie. And I don't mean to wave the, you know, I don't, I don't mean to wrap myself in the flag or anything like that, guys. But, you know, it just it really, it really bothers me. Um, Joanna Kern says, good afternoon. My father is a veteran. Now, my grandfather was a sniper in World War I. He literally got into a sniper's duel in uh, France with a German and I kid you not, um, I believe the story to be very true, although it was never written up in the newspapers or anything. A sniper's bullet flew down the barrel of my grandfather's gun, blew up the stock and wrecked his, I think it was his left arm. And that was how he got out of World War I. And he says that it was a simultaneous shot thing where he killed the other guy and the guy's bullet somehow went in right down the barrel of his gun. So anyways, yeah, no, I, I, I kind of wish I was a veteran. I tried to join the national guard at one point and ironically, um, this is after they had defaulted on my loans. And I talked to this guy, this commander, anyways, a guy that was running a cyber intelligence unit on Whidbey Island, Washington. And he said, we want you, you know, you maxed out, you, almost eight, you aced your ASVABs. I think I got one or two questions wrong on the whole entire test. Um, but he said, but you got to, you got to get your student loans figured out first before you join up. So do that and then join up. And then we will happily have you in what was a not even born yet cyber intelligence unit on Woodby Island, which would have been cool. I would have loved that. Uh, but anyways, I've also been to Iraq, by the way, but not as a not as a uh, not as an enlisted person. Um, in fact, I was not even allowed in the green zone when I, when I was in Baghdad in 2005. But um, quite a few stories there as well. Uh, but you know, no, I've worked in and around military bases for many years and done many things. And uh, in fact, I need to thank the U.S. Navy for paying for most of my graduate school. Um, the U.S. Navy through the uh, um, U.S. Transportation Command out of Scott Air Force Base. Um, but having said that, you got to tell the truth. Veterans are treated like piss. Like, I don't get it. Like, what? We just threw $7 trillion into Afghanistan and Iraq, but we can't seem to afford to, to finagle a freaking student loan cancellation for our veterans. Like, what? What's going on there? Like, I just don't get it. It's kind of like adjuncts, like people who teach at colleges for peanuts. They're not tenure track. They're PhDs. They got a mountain of student loan debt. They work like slaves for the colleges. It's kind of the same thing with people in the military, right? Like they don't, I don't think they're paid that much unless you're an officer. And even officers don't get paid super well. They may get paid pretty well, but certainly for enlisted people, they don't, they don't get paid super well. And I don't think the pension is really anything to shout out, shout home about, but it's like, we just spent like what? How much does how much does a, uh, a late model Abrams tank cost? I'm guessing fifty seventy five million dollars. <laughs> like you can pay for that one tank, that seventy five million dollar tank, but you can't somehow figure out your veterans. Give me a break. Anyways, hey Demetria Whitaker, uh, we've got a lot of veterans on this group. Holy cow! Yeah, guys, I'm telling you, veterans are being crushed by these student loans. It's disgusting. And I hope there's some Republicans out there watching this because there's no good reason for Republicans to be fighting against us. You know, anybody fighting against us, really what they're doing is they're fighting for the colleges, for big government, and for something that is wrecking Republican states. I don't get it. It makes no sense to me. Uh, but for the bad politics in this country, this problem would have been solved years or decades ago. Um, Joanna says, are you kidding? They didn't take you, Alan, because yeah, I'm not kidding you, Joanna. I'm not kidding you. <laughs> That's how that phone conversation went with that guy that was. Um, yeah. Anyways, that's my story. That's my own personal baggage. I don't like to talk about my personal stuff on air too often, but that is something that is sort of poignant in my own mind for my own personal self. Um, 
So, okay, guys. Well, hey, I want I wanted to keep it short tonight. I think I'll do that. But just remember, guys, we've got this. 80% of all federal student loan borrowers were underwater on their loans before the pandemic. Oh, I forgot to tell you that. 80% of all borrowers. So there's 43.2 million federal student loan borrowers in the country. 80% of them were underwater on their loans before the pandemic. So they either weren't able to pay at all or they were paying and paying and paying, but their loan balances were going up and most of them weren't paying at all. So that's 36 million people who are on our side. That's an army right there. That's like way bigger than the standing army of this country. I'm sure of it. In fact, that's, I think, bigger than the standing armies of every nation on earth combined. Think about that. You have no idea how strong we could be. Um, so take heart in that, guys. And keep, please keep holding Please keep helping us fight. The first thing that you can do is go to our website and do our daily actions. But you can do way more than that. You know, we need all the creative, smart people fighting as maybe with their state chapter groups. Join your state chapter. Or maybe as an army of one, as long as we're talking about army stuff and military and DOD and veterans and stuff. Uh, maybe as an army of one, you decide you see, you see an opportunity. You know, we've got very smart, creative people in this group. We don't like, we can't micromanage you all. We're a, we're a very weak organization by our very architecture, and that's the way it has to be. So think about what you can do to move the needle in our direction. Um, I was trying to think of another war analogy. <laughs> think of what you can do to march that flag a little further up the hill for us or whatever. Um, but one thing you might do is check out our medium platform. There's a bunch of articles there. Um, the first six, seven or eight, I would strongly recommend you just read those. This is largely unbroken facts about the student loan program. And by the way, we're a very credible group. Um, we've been featured on 60 Minutes. We've broken stories in the Wall Street Journal. Um, I've written a book. We've written probably hundreds of articles at this point. We've been featured on, I said featured on 60 Minutes, I said a long time ago. Um, we've been uh, written stuff in the New York Times. We've done all kinds of stuff and we don't lie. So the articles that you see there are absolutely and 100% true. Even if you don't see the mainstream media reporting those facts, that's on the media. The media is not good, guys. The media is not good. These facts are true. And I put every ounce of my credibility uh, behind every word in every one of those articles. I guarantee you they're true. And they're easily verified, by the way, by P Department of Education data. So read them. You'll be shocked, actually. You'll be very surprised to learn what those articles say. They're quick. They're, it doesn't take a long time to read them. Um, you should find them interesting to see how actually terrible this and how sinister and how nationally threatening this loan scam, and it is a scam, actually is. Um, and you will be a very fine fit and um, feared student loan justice warrior when you read those seven articles and you know that stuff. You'll know 80% of what I know if you do that. And um, that will make you very strong and very capable fighter, a soldier in this battle. So, all right, guys, I will leave it there at that. But again, happy Memorial Day. And thank, thank you to all the veterans who showed up tonight. And if I missed your comments, I apologize in advance. I'll try and respond to them offline, the ones I didn't see. So let's make this next week rock, guys. Our daily actions happen every day. We need you every day. Just a little tiny bit of effort every day. Two to three minutes a day. Not even that. Um, hopefully that's not too much to ask. Uh, and it's fun to fight this fight because we win every battle as long as we show up. So we got this, guys. We got this. We're all we've got, but we're all we need. And we got this. So good luck. Let's have a great week. Godspeed. God bless everyone.